I thought it would be really interesting to get scientists and artists together on a project and talk about a subject that's not normally in the context of art. What we wanted to do was show a different world to people that were from outside science. I'd never been in a working lab until this time. I found that really, really interesting, all the tools of the trade. There's a lot of layers you need to peel back in terms of just basic chemistry before you could get to free radicals themselves. Radicals have their own way of working and it's hard to sort of pin it down. It's the same as art. You're, you're almost like an alchemist in a way. It's been really interesting because I had no expectations of what they did or what they represented. The thing that gives us life through oxygen also kills us in the end. What will be the chemical reactions that happen with the radicals that mean that paints crack and degrade and fall apart or yellow or whatever they do over time? Some artists are quite happy with the uh, that degradation. It's part of the, the intent of the work and there's some artists who their work is based on the fact that it's going to be permanent and it needs to be stable and they, the day that they finish that painting they want it to remain like that as long as they possibly can. Another thing that's been really pleasing to see is that the scientists in the centre have been so willing to accept and um, artists coming in. Some of the language that were, was coming out of the scientists was particularly emotive. The stereotype of what an artist is, well, I probably walked in with the stereotype of what a scientist was, but they were from all over the world, all funny, unique, fantastic people. If ever I'd met somebody who had to look at the detail in life, these were it. These were the people that dealt with the absolute smallest things in life and yet it was the most important. We were talking about how a scientist sees and they were talking about their visual people. That was really news, news to me. It was very they, visual, yeah. 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 Well, in fact, they couldn't explain what their world was unless they did it with a visual diagram, board. which we got captured with. Mm. Quite um, descriptive, the way they talk, the way they... So yeah, really similar to artists in a way. Each colour behaves in a different way. Um, and as artists, we have to be able to predict that just like a scientist does. They have to predict what that's going to behave like when you're working with it. You add one colour and then another, and then you've got a subject, and then you've got a composition, yeah. and then you've got to do what your initial idea was, and then all of a sudden... That ability to predict becomes more difficult to harness. You're juggling all these things and then you've got maybe 20 works all on at the same time. So it's actually incredibly complex. Those traits of risk taking, exploring things and trying to take something that may be quite predictable and they have a sense of where it's going, they were excited by the randomness that was happening. That's the magic. That's what keeps people going on the next day and that's what you, you become well, that's what you desire. That obsessive nature which I've noticed in the scientists and which we have is something that you should hold on to dearly, not become repetitive and boring and to try something different and push it and keep moving forward. Like the best artists, just it's a vocation they talked about. It's not about the money. It's about the search for something and about integrity and adding to knowledge, which is what artists do too. That sharing of ideas and not being precious about what we are creatively seeing in front of us I think is aligned to what the scientists are doing too. I'm probably going to treat it more from a, a, a people point of view. I, you know, I was watching all the knowledge in all the, the scientists, but basically we're all going to end up gone. So how do they apply that knowledge through their lifetime and for what purpose and what good? It's a responsibility to the world in a way to understand it and to bring something to it. I'm really interested in degradation of artworks and permanence of artworks. So I want to play around with that notion of creation and destruction. The things that were lying around and the codes and the diagrams and all that kind of stuff, I find that really fascinating because it's like looking at um, hieroglyphics for me. And I, I would like to in some ways make a portrait, you know, the people we looked at, how do you make a portrait using their language? I was really hoping they would be open enough to come into our world and be excited by it and engage with us. And that's exactly what happened in this project. And I'm really excited that that's happened. What distinguishes chemistry from other natural sciences is that chemistry, like art, is the only science that can create the object of its own investigation. And I think it's that pursuit for that that is, um, you know, what, what I'll go away with. What we really hope 
will come from this is that there will be a new level of understanding in the community because of that, because the artists will speak to the community in a different language than what we would normally do so.